Bayou Time Sports is brought to you by Terrible General Health Systems Community Sports Institute in conjunction with Barker Honda. All right, and welcome to Bayou Time Sports. I'm Martin Falls. What a treat we have for you today because standing by on the other end is Gavin Dugas. There you see him. Uh, very, very well poised young man, and of course had a great career at Homer Christian, and he has excelled at LSU. So a lot of people in this area and people now on a national basis know about Gavin Dugas. So Gavin. There's no secret anymore. When you were coming up through high school and you were having great years and great career, you know, people were looking at you. The uh, colleges were looking at you. But now you've been on national TV and you've done some spectacular things. So just first of all, congratulations on a great season and a great career. And it's good to have you on our program today. I appreciate it. It's glad to be on. Let me ask you this, your, your career at LSU up to this point, you could have vacated, you could have went uh, and played some professional baseball, but let's talk about, first of all, what made you stay? And I, I think we know the answer because it's upcoming in the next few days, but in your own words, what made you stay? Absolutely. No, it's, uh, it's always been a dream of mine to play LSU baseball. Um, and honestly, there, there's no other thing like it in the world for me whenever it comes to, to playing a sport um playing for somebody that you've always wanted to play for and it's just such a such opportunity that I, I want to take as much advantage of as I can and having the opportunity to be here for five years is is something I, I'm so grateful for and I will always uh cherish um so just having the opportunity to continue to keep coming back uh Pro ball is always going to be there um that's one of my biggest things and LSU is is, is a thing where you can where you can stop but you can't stay for forever uh so having the opportunity to keep coming back is something that i was uh i had no problem with, with taking advantage of for sure you know you just everybody you talk to in this area and when you bring up gavin dugas they all say the same thing he's a fine young man he's a great young man he's just uh very down to earth it's got to be humbling in a way but you know at the same time it's probably has a lot on how you were brought up and your mom and dad and people around you. So uh, isn't that a great compliment to hear? Absolutely. No, I mean, I give all the credit to my parents and my family. Um, I wouldn't be where I am without them. Um, my mom and dad have been the two best parents that I could ever ask for. Um, and I'm so grateful for them. And like I said, the, the position I am in right now is because of them, uh, because of the time they put into me, uh, my brother, my family, uh, all my loved ones and the time that they put into the to the sport of baseball and letting me travel and uh, giving me the opportunity to be able to to afford the things that I've been able to to kind of have. Um, so I'm really appreciative of them and I can't be more thankful for that. You know, you've excelled and now you're excelling at the college level. But for us high school guys that that just didn't play college ball, we always had superstitions. We always had to do things. I remember when I was high jumping, my mom would pack honey in my duffel bag. Before football games, I had rituals. We had rituals for everything. We wanted to make sure that we didn't change anything because it might be bad luck. Do you have superstitions about how you get dressed, your practice rituals? What are your, What are some of yours? Uh, I wouldn't say I have too many crazy superstitions. Uh, my big one this year uh, is, is getting coffee. I'm a big, uh, big coffee getter in the mornings, whether it be uh, midday or early in the mornings before an early game. Uh, but me and, uh, me and Dylan Cruz, we have this thing where I get him coffee every morning and we have our same ritual or we drink them together. And just, uh, that's how we start our days. Um, so that's, that's kind of been my thing this year, no matter where we've been at home or on the road so far that I've noticed. So you gotta, you gotta keep those things working when they work for sure. And uh, sp speaking of Dylan, how, what's that relationship like? Because y'all are two very well-known names, but of course, when you have that many, you know, I guess guys that stand out on the same team were in high school, you were getting all the attention. Now everybody gets the attention. So y'all sort of share the glory, don't you? Uh, honestly, I let, I let him have all that. That's, uh, that's something that, that, being with the, the best player in the country is it's hard for him to 
have to take on. But I mean, it, it comes with being so good, um, and and he handles it so well. Um, he's a great person, and it's an it's an honor to be able to call him my teammate for the last three years. Uh, but but our relationship's been great. Uh, I would say we got a lot closer this year for sure. We've been hanging out a lot more outside the field. Uh, our girlfriends are pretty close and almost uh, best friend status it seems. So that kind of helps in us being able to hang out a lot. Uh, but no, I wouldn't want to surround myself uh, with a better person uh, than Dylan because he's hands down probably one of the, the greatest greatest people that I've ever met. You know, when I was watching y'all the other day, it just seems like the bats are starting to come alive. And, I mean, we all know in baseball, they can go dormant for a little while. It could be individually or as a team, but uh, has there been any talk or do you talk about it because you don't want to jinx yourself, but – do you, the bat started really coming alive, but it had to spread like wildfire with the psyche, right? Uh, no, I, I, yeah, I would, I'd say it's uh, hitting's pretty contagious um, from what I've seen in my career. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, we, we're, we're just trying to do what we're capable of doing and uh, and trying to keep the game as simple as possible. Uh, I mean, I, I really don't have much more to say about it other than that because, like I said, it, it's just – it's something that we expect out of ourselves. Um, and that's just that's just how we come to the field and expect to play. When you're moving in the lineup, batting lineup, and, you know, sometimes you're up in the lineup, sometimes you're in back of the lineup, all about strategy, coaching strategy, where do we want to move some of the players, all about if you're hot or not. And also, when you're moving positions, you know, infield to outfield. Any preference to you on both offense or defense, on where you'd rather be? Uh, no, not really. No, I'm a, I'm a big, uh, just put me in the spot you need me to be most successful in and uh, whatever it takes to, to win that day. Uh, so I, I'm more of a uh, just kind of plug and play guy. You know, if you need me to go somewhere and need me to do something different in lineup or bun or hit and run or whatever, like, you know, it's just something I just try to embrace every day and just whatever it takes to win. It's pretty much my mindset. You know, we see all you guys on TV, and we're watching the games religiously, and we're all trying to work sometimes because y'all playing in the afternoon, but we're peeking at the TV, and everybody's into it. But uh, you, you're seeing all the crew, you know, Trey Morgan, Tommy White, Travinsky, all these guys. Who's the one on the team that keeps it light? Who's sort of like the clown of the team? Uh, no, that's, uh, that's a tough one. We uh, we have a bunch of comedians on our team. It, it seems <laughs> we our team's very uh, – very comfortable one another whenever we're just uh, in a big group. Uh, but I'd say Malazzo, Beloso, Travinsky, uh, those those three guys come to mind the most about how when it comes to just kind of being light, being funny, cracking jokes, you know, just keeping the team just loose. Um, those guys are pretty funny, if I had to say, most of all. Yeah. And when you made that move from Homer Christian to LSU, and, of course, we all know that the talent level is going to increase and all that. But how was that morphing into, you know, you knew you were a good athlete. I mean, it's obvious. Everybody around you was telling you that. You knew it. You had the stats. But then you go into LSU, and everybody's got a pretty good game at LSU. So mm -hmm. how long did it take you to really fit in and become comfortable? Uh, I'd say my, my whole freshman year was kind of a big adjustment phase for me. Um, but like you said, it, coming into a program or a team um, where everybody's the best guy from their their school or organization, it, it's kind of like something that you have to learn uh, and, and understand that, like, hey, you're, you're coming into a, a group of guys that are just as good as you are, if not better. Um, so it's either you decide to, to work harder or you decide to, to slack off and and not commit to the to the grind of getting better. Um, so it, it's something that you kind of have to take upon yourself to to embrace, and um, that's that's something I'm very thankful for. My freshman year was a uh, it's a big shell shot going from a, a high school of 500 kids K through 12 to a school of uh, 25 to 30 thousand people. Um, so I mean, it took a it took a big growing up phase for me. And how did it feel as you were looking across? Or maybe I was so focused. Y'all didn't see any of the game. Nichols was playing Alabama, and Nichols mm -hmm. took him right to the end of it. But to have a college, you know, only a few hop, hop skipping a jump away from you, uh, playing at that level had to make you feel pretty good also. 
Oh, absolutely. No, I was fortunate enough to uh, to be able to watch that game because uh, we played so earlier in the day. Um, I know they had a couple of random delays or whatever, but no, uh, it, it, I became a fan that night when they played, uh, just knowing, just watching Nichols, kind of a little bit of a hometown thing. I know home is not the closest to, to the university, but uh, but it was it was pretty awesome to see, and I was definitely rooting for them uh, to be successful in that moment. You stuck it out all these years, and, and I'm really sort of using you as a poster athlete for the rest of the athletes that all want to, you know, sort of forego some of their college career and you know, take that quick check. But you thought it out. You decided to stay, and you spent more than enough years at LSU, but there was a reason. And I sort of wanted you to explain in your own words what was that – you know, final decision and what was the motivation to stay? And uh, here you are now, you know, with the culmination of a career and just put it in your own words. I mean, yeah, no, uh, me and coach uh, Johnson had a really good talk at the end of last year, uh, not knowing how the draft would go due to all my injuries and everything. Uh, but at the end of the day, I was 100% bought into coming back. And, and there's a lot of reasons behind it. You know, just having an opportunity to compete for LSU again is something that I always cherish and, and if I ever continue to have the opportunity to I would take advantage of um, but no I, I love the idea of competing for the Tigers because um, it just feels like home you know this is this is my place this is my city uh, outside of Homa um, so I mean it, that, that meant a lot to me as well and I, I love I love being close-knit with a group of guys and competing for one another you know I, I think college baseball takes that to a different level on how we compete uh, just because we we're trying to win you know we're not getting paid to, to do a job we're getting paid to play the game of baseball uh and, and enjoy it you know like we're we're college athletes that are, that are showing up and doing the same thing every day going through the grind of early morning workouts and fall practices and the long days of uh hot summers and all that fun stuff and you know that's just something that I love to embrace and enjoy with my my teammates and make new friends along the way so Gavin let me take you back we're gonna roll in a grand slam at home of Christian and there you see it over CCA, and that's back in the day. And, Gavin, I'm not sure if you're seeing it in Baton Rouge, but we're watching it here for sure. And uh, many home runs, it's special. And what we'll do now, we'll come back to Gavin because I'm curious, and we'll run in some of the other home runs at LSU while you're answering this question. But when you are at bat and – you make that good connection. Do you know right away that you've hit the sweet spot or is it something you have to look at for a second to see where it's going or is it instantaneous? Uh, there, uh, there's some swings that, that some people may feel that uh, in my particular case, there's, there's a couple for me that I got to make sure I get over the fence. So I don't ever uh, have to, take the shame of um, jogging around the bases too early. Um, Cause that's kind of one of my, uh, low-key um paranoid thoughts uh because i did that in high school one time and I, I hit a home run i thought it was a home run <clears throat> i'm sorry uh i didn't hit a home run which i thought was a home run and uh, i had to take the shame of uh going around the bases that way um and i kind of vowed to myself never to do that again so but there is there is moments where you do hit balls that, that you know have, have a good chance of getting over so yeah for sure <clears throat> that one you hit uh against oregon state that really uh, put your team in that great situation. What, what does that do for your confidence? Because hitters, it's all about confidence when you get up there, and we all know hitters can have ups and downs, but you came rolling back. What did that do for you? No, uh, LSU's a – or I'm sorry, uh, baseball's a really big uh, game of failure, obviously. Um, I mean, from the statistics, you fail uh, seven out of ten times, and you're a Hall of Famer. Um, so – for, for a baseball player, an athlete in general, it's really, really key to kind of be as even keel as possible through the, through the highs and lows of your game. Um, so just being able to succeed in that moment obviously was a, a very big boost to my confidence. Um, very, very heartwarming moment to, to help my team get in a better position to win uh, that game. Uh, but at the end of the day, no, just trying to stay as even keel as possible when it comes to success and failure, uh, hitting home runs or not doing anything like that. Do you pinch yourself sometimes and go, wow, I mean, I have had a pretty good life up to this point? 
Absolutely. No, I'm so thankful for the position that I'm in, the people that I've met. Uh, the Lord has, has blessed me in, in so many ways. Um, and it's so much adversity, success, and failure. I'm so thankful for, for the, the feet and the place that I am in life. Um, and I thank the Lord every day for that. Um, but I, I can't be more thankful for the situation. I, I still get goosebumps sometimes when I see all of those fans in the stadium. Uh, and I've been here for five years, so that, that should show you how, how much of an impact it has on us as players. Yeah, how do you stay grounded or level-headed? Look, I've, we've covered so many people over the years, and some handle it so gracefully, and, and others, they sort of get out the box, but you've been able to hold it in check. How have you done that? My biggest thing is uh, just sticking to the situation, staying where my feet are, uh, never letting the situation in front of me get bigger than our plan. Uh, and I think that's one of the biggest things that's ever helped me in baseball and in life, uh, just not looking past uh, anything and just staying in the in the present, not looking to the future or the, or the past. You know, I, I, I really harp on just trying to stay on the pitch, you know, just win one pitch at a time and that'll take care of the rest. And it, it kind of gets you through the game in a good way and helps you be as competitive as possible. You're getting a chance to play some of your, you know, final games. Hope it's not the final games, but in, in Tiger country. And what does that mean to, to be at home and to sort of close out a big part of your career right there at Tiger, you know, in Tiger land? Absolutely. No, LSU's, Obviously, my home. I've been here long enough to be able to say that. Um, yeah. I talked to Kate Beloso, one of my best friends and current teammates, uh, who's in the same situation as me. And no matter how the outcome this weekend goes, you know, this is our last two games, three games, and in, uh, in the box, you know, it, it's it's kind of a moment that it, it hits you pretty well. But I mean, for me to to be the player that I want to be, I, I can't really get too deep into that because uh, I want to. I want to be as successful as possible as I can for this team. So just I'm going to have to stay in the moment as much as possible. Um, and when the time comes, I'll, I'll be able to take it all in. Uh, but I'm so focused on on playing on Saturday that I just haven't been trying to get into those thoughts yet. What do you have to say? Final question, because uh, we're running a little bit out of time. But what do you have to say to everybody who followed your career and everybody from HOMA and everybody who just you know fell in love with your career and you as a person? What do you have to leave them with? Absolutely. No, thank you for that. Uh, you putting that out there for me. And I, I can't be more thankful for the, uh, the support of my family, friends, fans, uh, everyone out there that's had an impact on my life um, and let me impact theirs uh, in any form or shape or imagination. I, I'm forever grateful. Um, and I hope that um, you will continue to, to be able to impact me as well. Uh, I'm so thankful for the support um, from, from fans in general. Um, and I, I just can't, Obviously, just can't be more thankful for this situation. Well, Gavin, we appreciate you joining us and taking a little time for us at HTV. So proud of you, and we're going to be tuned in. A lot of people would be tuned in, but uh, regardless, you've had a great career. You've been a great person and a great role model, and I'm hoping some of the younger kids seeing this, they understand that. Thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. God bless. All right. God bless you. Gavin Dugas, folks, we'll be back with more. Don't go away.